Right, well, it's good afternoon and it's Jerusalem time. It is 5 p.m. on the 23rd of June. And we are on the Shabbat call on Friday. It's, a, it's such a lovely call to have. And so we are really good. It's so good for us to be able to join together as a family to s celebrate the Shabbat and also to hear what uh, the Lord is speaking into the lives of the people around us. So thank you, um, Yuri and Shirley, uh, are also going to be able to share. And uh, I'm just going to pray for Yuri first, and then we'll, we'll go into the song that we have. Lord, thank you for this call. I thank you, Lord, for every call that we have, because every call is so precious in different aspects of that call. But this is a very special one in the week, because it is the the time when we really remember what you did for us on the cross of calvary and for the way in which we can celebrate together your the um your life and death and burial and resurrection so we thank you lord for that and i pray that you will be with us on this call that the people who are coming on will come on swiftly and lord that we will have a a, a very special hour together thank you jesus amen Do you want me to go straight to the song or do you want to say something first, Julie? Yes, this call is uh, very much a response to uh, the post, the recent post on the Global Watch community signal thread. And uh, apart from the international prayer room with the daily watches that uh, on this Zoom line, there are uh, several uh, group, news groups of the different watches or the global watch in general with um, threads of communication going on, discerning prophetic insights, sharing prayer burdens on a personal, regional, or national level. And um, many of you who are on this call right now I know you're actively participating in this uh, discussion, even on the thread. And so it, it's another way to, to communicate and interact together. And even the song I picked for the beginning is a song that was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, played at the Australian Watch this morning already and uh, referred to in uh, a post by Ruth Webb. So greetings to you, Ruth. I know it's already very late in Australia. So I wish you good night and we pass on the baton, pass on the torch to the next uh, time zones so that constantly there will be a, a voice in the wilderness, a song in our mouth, Praising the Lord. Go ahead, please. Lord, I thank you for this hour. And we lift our hearts to you. May the thoughts of our hearts, the words of our lips be a sweet aroma and incense rising to you, lifting up your name, glorifying your name, Yeshua. We invite your presence, Holy Spirit. Come and connect our hearts with the Lord and with one another. We open our ears, listening to your voice. And coming, entering the rest that you have prepared for us. Now, who of you can feel a certain shift in the atmosphere in those past days? Um, there is a few things that indicate that shift. Um, moving into the new moon, Rosh Chodesh, moving into the month of Tammuz. And... Um, the, I encourage you 
if you haven't been part of the call to listen to the uh, Monday morning watch uh, uh, the uh, of the spirit of Elijah journey um, where uh, it was about uh, going into and coming out of the wilderness and um, you find this on the on the thread um, as well as in the global watch app so go sh shifting into a new month with everything what Tammuz holds um, as this month's month we are going to enter into the three days of uh, the uh, three weeks leading up to uh, the ninth of Av is is definitely leaving the the latter rain, the spring rain behind, and it is uh, very hot in Germany right now as we have we entered summer season. But what is this season about in your own life? Maybe you just take this question before the Lord. Um, what is, what does this season hold uh, for you personally? And then um, as we join forces and, and listen to the Lord and to one another, we discern times and seasons. And there was uh, a post by Shirley um, just recently that really got my attention. And that is why I invited her uh, and gave her room to share this word with us as we dig into the scriptures and as uh, we try to, to understand if the Holy Spirit is is speaking to to the body, how are we to react on such a prophetic word, both in prayer, uh, in our heart attitude, in the expectations, what is ahead of us, but even how to prepare practically, not just in prayer, but even practically. And this this Shabbat call, even though it's recorded, um, it, is, it is supposed to be a secure realm to share with one another, to, to share our own understanding, to listen to one another, to enlarge uh, the capacity of our heart and the understanding. How, how do we actually digest such a word? How do, you, how do we grab a word and run with it? And uh, this is where I want to invite Shirley, who is not just uh, 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 who holds not just a PhD in prophetic uh, ministry, but whom the Lord has entrusted. He has given her a love for His Word, but also a fresh revelation of this Rama Word. And I know it is. Uh, for surely also an, an act of faith to come up with what she he has been hearing from the word, from the Lord. And especially if it is not only a cheerful, happy, clappy word, but something solemn and serious, um, it, takes, it takes obedience and courage and wisdom. And I, I see all of the these three in Shirley's life and uh, and I believe this is why the Lord can even enlarge the sphere of what he reveals to her and we want to bless you in that uh, and we say we we trust the Lord and we trust you we want to to come around you, rally around you, as you as you speak out and move for, forward with the word that the Lord has given you. So Shirley, go ahead. 
thank you, Uli. Um, <laughs> I only found out about this about an hour and a half ago, about 90 minutes ago. <laughs> so um, no pressure. <laughs> But I went to I went to sleep last night just before I went to sleep, and I just had this nagging, um, this continual thought, and I kept pushing it out of my mind because it had been going on for about two days, and I thought, no, 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 that must just be me. It must just be, you know. Sometimes people say it was the pizza, or it was this, or it was that. But um, and I'm I'm also very careful about what I watch, you know if. I love I love now and again watching a really good movie or you know my husband and I enjoy you know doing stuff like that but tomorrow um which will be Saturday morning for us here we have a what I call a prophetic presbytery and a prophetic presbytery the presbytery word is only in the King James version and what it is it's a, it's when elders gather together um and actually lay hands on and prophesy over people it's known as a um, prophetic booth. You know, there's there's a whole lot of different words that one can can use. So um, I've I've organized a whole bunch of prophetic voices. I'm not calling them prophets, but prophetic voices, people that are um, recognized and um, are sound in their prophetic words. And we are going to a school tomorrow um, that has been going on for a, a week and a half on supernatural living, specifically um, prophetic evangelism, um, words of, you know, all the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this whole week, I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm saying all of this because of the word that I'm about to share with you. Um, I've been just going before the Lord and saying, Lord, what is on your heart? What is on your heart? What is on your heart? And I've, I've been just getting Every now and again, I've been getting the odd scripture. I'll see somebody's. I don't know who's going to be there. I know who the prophetic voices are. We're all going to this venue tomorrow. But I don't know who the um, students are. There is, a, I think there's about 70, 70 students. And so I'm, I've just been saying, Lord, and now and again, I'll see somebody's face or I'll have a scripture or I'll have a sense of something. And I know that tomorrow when we are there, the Lord will show me who these words are for. But last night, I... I just felt that I needed to write this word. And the, the one thing, and, and I'm, I'm sharing this with those who, who love the prophetic, who are, who are growing in the prophetic and maybe don't always have the confidence or are not always sure about what it is that they're hearing. And I, I'm, I'm sharing my process with you. So the Lord has been speaking to me about having stronger words, sharper words, and bigger words, and that I mustn't be afraid to release them. And for those of you who know me personally, I've I've had a huge struggle with um, confidence, confidence, and and courage, and boldness in releasing prophetic words. Whenever I I share a word, my heart is pounding. It is pounding. I'm nervous. I just, you know, you know, maybe for some people, it just flows out, Nabi prophets, you know, there's all these different amazing gifts that people have. But even to this day, today, even as I'm sharing this with you, I'm, I'm feeling anxious. And, and I, I, I believe it's also, it's a good thing as well, because we know that it's not us. If I was arrogant, and I was like, oh, I've got this word, and you've got to hear what God is saying. And Ah, you know, for me, that is that that is not who I am. And 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 so I'm I'm gonna submit this to you humbly. I sent this word, I, I wrote it out and I sent it to four people that that I trust. Um, and then I got a response back. One of them is Susan Rao, and she said, Shirley, you've got to put that on the on the Global Watch thread. I've been wrestling with that this whole week. And so that gave me um confidence okay let me put that on the group but I will always <laughs> put before there I've submitted this word because you know it's um what is prophecy it is edification exhortation and comfort right but now and again the Lord will give you a word of warning or a word of of preparation and what do you do if God gives you that word for your church or for your prayer house or for your home group and you're not quite sure how, or for your nation, how, how do you release that word? 
Well, the first thing you do is you really make sure you hear God, you get the scriptures, you work through it, you process it, you pray it through. And sometimes the Lord will give us, he'll share his secrets with us. Jeremiah 33, verse three, and he'll share his secrets, but we are to wait and say, Lord, okay, so you, you're sharing this word with me. Am I to release it now? If I don't have a witness, I will wait. Sometimes I sit on words for quite a while and just wait and process. Sometimes the Lord doesn't want me to share it at all. He just wants me to pray it through. So when it's a word like this, I will always share it with my superiors, for example, or somebody that I'm um, in a relationship with where they have authority. I'll share it with them and ask them just to check it and test it and weigh it. And again, you do that. And if they come back and go, mm, no, not now, not yet, that's okay. Sometimes you'll find pastors in churches will also say, mm, you know, not now. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I've been obedient. So in, in, in saying all of that, I just, I wanted to just build it up because one of the ways I learned in the prophetic was when people explained their process to me and how things actually came to them. So this is the word. Um, for I'm just going to read it. For two days, I've heard the words brace for impact. I kept getting a sense of an airplane with passengers on board. A very, it was a very big airplane, okay? The pilot and the cabin attendants are giving instructions to brace for impact. Passengers are to remain seated, bend over with their faces as close to their legs as possible, feet firmly on the floor and their hands on their heads. Now, for those of you who, who love symbols and, and like the, the, the prophetic dictionaries, there are so many things in this that one can actually unpack. I'm not going to go into all of that now. I then said, I'm reminded of Elijah, the way he prayed. And here we've got 1 Kings 18, 42 and James 5, 16 to 18. So if somebody could please, Uli, if you could get, people to read the following i'm just going to put them in the in, in the chat now the two scriptures i'd like them to read there we go 1 kings 18:42 and we are looking for volunteers to read out those scriptures so if you open if you if you have that scripture open go ahead and mute yourself and read read out loud I think they should put their electronic hand out, otherwise they speak over each other. <laughs> and then also I've got um, Luke, I I'm putting it in here, but what I want you to do is I want you to read the one from Luke in the ESV translation, English Standard Version. Okay, I'll put that in the, in the group. Okay, Uli, over to you. And then I'll, when, when they've read only the first two, the, the Luke one is just preparation for 10 okay, minutes. Okay, Eliab, go ahead with First Kings. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, crouched on the ground and put his face between his knees. And so while we're waiting for the next person to read to read James um, 5, 16 to 18, for se seven times, Elijah sent his servant to go and have a look and to see if there was any indication of rain. Seven times he came back. It was only, well, on the seventh time, he said he saw a cloud the size of a man's hand. But you can just imagine Elijah has been praying and praying and, and earnestly seeking God that he put his face to the ground. And, and, and I don't know if you're actually seeing this or getting a sense of it. It's, it's, it's not the fact that an airplane is going to crash. That's not what this is about. This is about the pilot who is the person who is leading, who is driving. Often an airplane is a metaphor for a ministry 
or a business or a church or something like that. And that the, um, the cabin attendant, that is the person who is directing people, would, would then say to them, brace for impact. And what is this about? It's about getting into that posture. It's about posture aligning, aligning our hearts and saying, right, let's get into that place. Because the Lord is saying, this is serious. Okay, um, go ahead, Tim. Tim? Yep, okay, look. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Right, amen, amen. So the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I see Pam's got her hand up. Pam, um, if you've got the ESV translation, um, in a moment, I'll call on you to read to, le to read Luke. So this is the um, this is what I, I received. This this to me was the message, and yes, the message. One is in a person who scatters is coming against you. Brace yourself. Call out your forces. Prepare your defenses and man the fortifications. Keep watch up and down your streets. Strengthen your back. Prepare for battle. Strap your war belt around your waist. Summon and gather all the strength you can. And um, Nahum 2 verse 1 from the voice translation says it like this. An attacker is moving in to scatter you. You had better guard your fortress. Keep watch up and down your streets. Strap your war belt around your waist and gather all the strength you can. Let's um, let's have Pam um, share Luke twelve thirty five to forty with us. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. Thank you, Pam. That was all of you read really, really well, very beautifully. Thank you. And so, you know, what is the Lord actually saying here? Is this saying there's going to be an airplane crash and we're going to, no, I, I don't, I, 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 look, if there is something like that, I don't know about it. But what I am sensing is that the Lord is saying it's time to get serious. It's a time to take what it is that we've learned, all the, all the tools that we've we've um, gathered, all the things that we have been building upon, because this is the time now that we're going to need it. What happens if something major, catast um, a catastrophic event happens? What are you going to do? Are you going to be in a panic and run around? Or are you going to get into that place of of intercessory um, warfare, of, 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 of birthing, of praying, of, of, and you see very often, sadly, some people only pay, only, um, pay or play lip service to their walk with the Lord. Sometimes people just talk and they say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but they actually, they actually are not always living up to that. 
your the the quiet time the, the time in the secret place the time with the lord that is where we get strengthened that is where we receive what it is that the lord is is wanting to give us where we posture our hearts so that we are able then to affect the the the, the world and the atmosphere around us and then on when one last thing on wednesday when fred asked me to close in prayer on the um on the israel watch i'm going to put it in the chat now uh, okay Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 2. I'm just going to read that to you. I, this um, Brace for Impact was coming as a, with the scripture. This, this was the, the, the beginning of this whole um, message of, of Bracing for Impact. And this is what it said. It said, listen to the Lord. The one who formed you says, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. So in a nutshell, that is that is the word. And I wanted to end off on the Isaiah um, 43, verse 1 to 2, because that is God's promise to us. But he's wanting us to get into a place where we are praying like Elijah, where we have got our knees, our, our heads toward our knees, feet flat on the ground. And that's what, what does that speak of? I'd, I'd actually like to hear those, those of you who enjoy what, what the parables and the symbols all mean, what does it mean to have your feet flat on the ground? And there's some other things there. And then um, there were a couple of comments. Um, Uli, would you like me to put them in the chat or shall I just read them or both? Well, uh, will you read them? <laughs> no, we'll have someone of the crew read them. But you put them in the chat first. And the reason okay. why I would uh, why I would like some of you to read out the, the comments in the chat is that those people who watch the recording, they cannot, they, they will not see the chat. So they only will listen to your words. And um, and by reading them out, it is also an act of bearing witness to those words of our uh, brothers and sisters. So uh, uh, you all see those posts uh, in the in the chat by Karen Davis and Sharon Cream. And if you feel that stirring in your heart to just to to give witness to these words, then un uh, unmute yourself and and go and uh, go and read. Yeah, I think also just the person whose name is at the top is the person who whose post it is. So please mention their name, right. and then this is what they what they posted. Sure, I can jump in and read them. Karen Davis says such a powerful picture of the position that Elijah took as he bent over face to the ground in fervent prayer. Sharon Green says. Yes, thank you, Shirley. Bracing, setting my face, standing, bracing, reading the battlements, strapping on the war belt, taking aim, keeping the lampstand filled with oil and burning, remaining still before our King of Kings. Great. And then this one, I, I don't have time to actually write in here that it's um, from, Karen, from Karen Davis. Um, Karen Davis posted this. Ilya, if you could read that as well, that would be great. Sure. Uh, from Beb Doty in response to Shirley's word. I have to agree strongly with this. This is what the Lord gave me also in a 12th chapter, Exodus 12, 11. In this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in, in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. 
One of my last words in a discussion late last night was, he, Yeshua, comes like a thief. But as I went to bed, it was like the spirit was saying, you don't understand this. When I woke up, I understood. The children of Israel on the night of the Exodus were dressed and ready to go. The angel of the Lord came as a thief in the night to Pharaoh, sorry, and all of Egypt and broke into his house and robbed the Egyptians of their firstborn. They were asleep. The enemy of our souls is not omniscient. He does not know when the Lord is coming. We are to be like the children of Israel, dressed and ready to go, eating of the sacrifice and welcome the deliverer as they did with the sacrificed blood on the lintels and doorposts of our lives. It is the Lord's Passover. Do everything he tells you to do. The ninth plague before the destroyer was darkness, a darkness that could be felt. Keep the light of Yeshua burning bright in our hearts, and do not fear, but be ready. For in that day there was light in Goshen. Karen Davis says also from Bebdoti, Yeshua is the strong man. We are not to fear. It was truly from the Lord to join with what he gave Shirley. Ruth Webb says, I concur, Shirley and others, since our journey in Israel been so aware of colliding winds, cold wind and hot wind impacting each other. In our worship watch tonight again, Second Chronicles chap chapter 20. As we brace, we continue to praise and sing, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, even if it's wobbly. Thank you, Eliav. Uli, over to you. Yes, I would like to add my own comment, which wasn't on the signal thread yet. But as I was preparing for this uh, Shabbat call, I looked at the Parshat Shavua, the Torah portion, which is uh, numbers 16, 17, and 18. It is, uh, the, the portion is called Korach. And uh, we, we know it's an upheaval. Um, and it's about, the, the question is about spiritual authority. Who actually um, has the mandate for the priesthood? And uh, this also comes with, um, with a distraction within the camp of Israel. And here in uh, number 16, verse four, on that, uh, on that challenge that, uh, the, or up, uprising, upheaval that Korah uh, placed uh, against Moses. So when Moses heard it, verse four, he fell on his face. And it's the same posture that we see with Elijah. Uh, he, he fell. Uh, uh, on, on his face to the earth. And he spoke to Korah and all his company saying, tomorrow morning, the Lord will show who is his and who is holy and will cause him to come near to him. The one whom he chooses, he will cause to come near to him. And there is where I already want to end quoting from uh, the Parsha. Um, but to me, this is in the same flow um, the the posture of Mama, Moses, who not only challenged uh, Korach, but he fell on his face, deeply interceding, uh, because he understood this is not uh, this is not coming against him, against Moses, questioning his uh, authority, but the posture of Korach is coming against the Lord Himself. And in that way, he falling uh, on his face, Moses allowed the Lord to speak up on behalf of them, of him, of Moses. He didn't need to defend himself, but also he didn't give in. He understood this is uh, questioning the Lord's authority and whom the Lord has given authority. And so he, he didn't just intercede and left it, but he, he took that on to the, 
to the contest, just as Elijah was uh, confronting the the Baal priest with with the um, with the experiment of oh, oh, whose offering will receive the Lord's fire. Then also here with the keterot, the the incense pens. Hmm. He he went he went uh, he he went on to to serious business, and he left it to the Lord to show His holiness, to show His glory, and and God replied uh, in a way that is is frightening. Um, that actually cost the lives of 250 men at first and later on during the plague of some 40, 14,000. So uh, we often, when we, when we say we, we long to see God's glory, are we prepared that he will come in ways that, that, that may even seem disastrous. And is, is counting on, on this as appearance also a way of how we fasten our seatbelts, of how we prepare our hearts to, to encounter the Holy One. I don't have a, a straightforward answer. I will just leave you with this question even examining my own and your uh, 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 my own heart and inviting to do so with you and from that place i would like to to go before the lord in prayer and to and it's it's a place to to pour out your heart to utter your the thoughts of your heart to ask for 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 counsel or to come up with your own heart's response of where the lord has prompted you to or shown you your own heart so there is no straight prayer direction or there is not a b c one two three four five to pray into now but this is it, it's really in invitation to give a corporate answer to to this to this word and as we listen to to one another in prayer this is also another realm of digesting and discerning the word further Shirley would you like to start uh, to start us off in prayer and then uh, everyone else we have uh, some time left, so so who feels um, who feels prompted, go ahead, open your mic, and keep your prayers to the point, but engage actively. Um, Oli, I think before before we pray, there there are two comments on the the chat, and um, if it's okay to just invite Katia from the UK and Deborah Boggs just to share what the Lord had put on their heart in the in the comment that they've posted in the chat. Katia? Is she still there? Sorry, yes, I am. <laughs> Took me a bit long. Yes, for, for weeks I've been, I can witness to what Beth Dotti mentioned about Exodus and um, being ready to, to the degree of readiness that you 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 hear the word of the Lord and you go. You don't look back. You don't try to grab anything. You just go. And um, I, I wasn't sure. I must admit, until today, I always thought it was more for my life. There is a. I'm in a season of getting repositioned uh, by the Lord. It feels very strong that I will be repositioned at some point. I'm just waiting on you know the the word go, the timing, because God is the anoint uh, the, the God of the anointed and appointed times. 
So, um, but in the meantime, in the waiting, it is an active waiting that I'm doing, which is letting go and letting go and letting go. And it comes with a lot of freedom. It really frees, it frees me up so much um, that um, I, I understand that it is his will to let go so that we are free in him and for him. Because if we look back, it says everything was made through him but also for him so we are made our lives are for him he knows where we need to go next so that means nothing on earth we should allow to hold us back and bind us or say oh hang on i can't so um so that's the position i'm in at the moment and he's speaking very vividly to me also through isaiah 43 18 uh, the following do not look at things of the past can't you see it? Don't ponder on them. Can't you see I'm about to do a new thing? He's going to put the new stream into the wilderness. It's all about the wilderness at the moment. It really is. It is about God sustaining us. And I've been given a word yesterday. I have been doing some contemplative praying with, with one of my churches. And um, we, we were just practicing that and seeking and asking the Lord being still and um, and I was given uh, Ezekiel 2.6. Now in Ezekiel 2.6, it says, as for you, human being, don't be afraid of them or their words. Even if briars and thorns surround you and you sit among scorpions, don't be afraid of their words or be upset by their looks, for they are a rebellious house. Now, to me, I do take that in this season of mine that the repositioning might also happen and come. It might be for other people here as well, that possibly there might be accusations uh, being fired at me. But the thing is, what, what I understand we need to do is really keeping our eyes on him, regardless of what anyone else is going to say, what it looks like to anyone else around us what we do, if we know that we're in God's will, then we need to do it. We need to be radical and blunt and actually, um, what's the word? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's just that we are bold, just bold, being bold and not listening to anyone else, but have our eyes, eye, ge eye gates and ear gates so tuned in and to God that we focus Amen. on that and do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Katya. And then we'll quickly go to Deborah if she is available. Yes, um, uh, mine's uh, just um, just a couple of verses from the, the Torah portion that uh, um, Uli rec uh, referenced. And I had just been looking at that. Um, so in 1646, through uh, 48, it just, it's just talking about, you know, the rebellion and the plague that broke out and um, as a result of that rebellion. And, and what just stood out to me, and this was my comment, was how Moses and Aaron <clears throat> quickly grabbed their, their censers, their incense, you know, that picture of intercession. And it says that they ran directly into the midst of the congregation, right into the midst of it, where everything, the chaos was and the plague and all of that, and they ran directly into it. For behold, the plague had begun among the people. So they put on the incense and made atonement for the people. He took his stand between the dead and the living so that the plague was checked. And so for me, it's just this picture, and I think it does speak to positioning as, as Katya was saying, and, um, and surely as your word, I think you said, uh, posture alignment to get ready, to get into position. Um, as a picture of intercession and, and however else the Lord directs us individually. But it is this picture, it's like a first responder, you know, if there's a fire or, or anything, you know, everyone else is running out of the building, right? And, and the first responders are running right into the middle of it to, to check the plague, so to speak, and whatever, whatever that looks like in the natural or in our spiritual, in our intercession. So um, I just want to encourage and, and just affirm that word about positioning and, and that our intercession, the power of our intercession individually and corporately standing in the midst of our congregation is powerful and effective, as James says. So thank you for letting me share. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Deborah and Katya. That was really, really good. And 
Um, Uli, I'm just going to go with what I feel is on on, on my heart. Um, I, I can lead us in prayer, but I've, I've actually spoken quite a bit. So I'm going to ask um, two people if it's okay with them. I have sent them notes. I don't haven't responded, got a response from Golda, but I'd like for Golda to pray and also for Michael. Michael, if you could start just with a with, with pray into this and Golda, if you could as well, and then. I just want to cite an observation. Uh, when you shared about this word, uh, you mentioned that you shared it with those who you are in relationship to and those you submit to. In contrast to Cora, who had some standing as a leader, uh, try to go beyond uh, the level of authority God gave them. Uh, it's so important uh, being under submission, uh, particularly those that are given to receive words. Uh, so Father, uh, we just heed the warning uh, for the reading uh, for this week, oh God. Uh, you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. So I just pray, Lord, in our receiving, uh, in our insights, God, that we may have a heart of submission to those whom you put in governmental authority in our lives, God, that we may respect, uh, even as your servant David did, respected Saul, even in his error, uh, God. Uh, so I just pray that for us, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you, Michael. That's, that was great. Golda. Well, <clears throat> um, I have had a strong sense that there was a lot coming. And um, that has been very weighty for me. So Lord, I thank you that I, I'm reminded one time, Lord, of when I was on a plane where we had to brace because we were going through such turbulence. And I remember, Lord, that even in that place, there was a sense that you were there and you were taking us through the storm. And even though there was lightning and there was thunder and the ride was really bumpy. And some people were getting sick and some people were getting scared. That the plane itself and the pilot was given wisdom and structure to handle the storm. So Lord, I know that not everybody is in the plane and not everybody is even aware of the, the storm. But I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be more aware of you, of what you're saying, of your instructions, of your peace in the middle of the storm, of your confidence that the pilot knows what he's doing. And the cabinet attendant knows what they're doing and that we can weather the storm. Lord, Lord you have given us warnings. This, the storm that is coming is huge. We don't know what that looks like. I sense that it's from all sides and in all places, Lord, and that there are very few places where it will feel like it's really safe and secure and without battle. But I thank you, Lord, that you are the pilot. And that on the other side of the storm is this destination that you called us to, Lord. And so I pray that you would help us to be faithful to ride out the storm. Have confidence in you as the pilot, Lord. And arrive at the destination that you have. Thanks, Lord. Amen. Yes. 
over to you, Uli. Thank you. Thank you, Golda. Anyone else? I feel there is still one or two people to pray, to pray now before we close. Sharon, go ahead. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are not far, you are intimate. Jesus, I thank you that you reign, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. I thank you that even in this hour, as the storm is coming, that you are in the midst. You are not outside, you are in the midst. So I thank you that even no matter what the storm looks like, that you are present and that you are in the midst of the storm. You are in the midst. So Father, I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your comfort. I thank you for your encouragement. Father, we receive the word of the prophet. We bless you. We thank you for how you are moving in the earth. We thank you that you are giving us eyes to see and ears to hear you, that we can recognize you in the midst of a storm, that we don't have to be afraid that we won't know. So I thank you, Spirit of the living God, that you are increasing our discernment. You are increasing our vision. You are increasing our intimacy with you to know that when the glory of your presence is upon us in unexpected ways, that we will look into the storm, walk into the storm, lean into, because we know your presence is in the midst. We bless you and we honor you. We love you. We glorify you. We magnify you in Jesus' name. Lord, and we stand in the gap and around those who we really, around those who, who, whom you have placed on the front lines, who have um, taken on shield and sword, who, um, who stand in, in the battle lines and who are confronted with, with lies, with manipulation, um, uh, that, um, even with the blasphemy of your name. We lift them up before you, Lord, and I pray that your name would be glorified and that it's not their battle, but yours. It's not our battle, but yours. Lord, let us walk in the, in the, in the perfected works of the cross. For your blood is enough. You have paid the price. You have overcome. And we are, we are invited to follow the overcomer and to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And may I give over to you, Tim and uh, Stefan, uh, to lead us in communion. Have we worked out what order we're doing it in? Do you have a have a preference, Stefan? Yes. You got the bread, bread. Bread. You go first or whatever. Okay, Stefan, go ahead. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this special time together. And thank you, God. You are the one and the only, and this is is a part of intimacy with you to mm. take your bread, to take your body in mm. us. You are a part of our body. And thank you for this special time. 
that you shared your heart with, with us for this time to be prepared. And thank you for taking this communion. It's a part to preparing for the way with you for this time. Mm. And we, we bless all of you with intimacy with the Lord himself mm. in his body. Thank you, Lord, for your no, for this new time, for this new covenant. We are in it, in this special time. Thank you, Lord, for your body. Yeah. Take it. Thank you, Lord. And Abba, as we, we come and we remember the blood of the one that you loved, but the one that you were separated from, we thank you that this is part of our preparing our defences. This is part of our bracing for impact as we enter in to the reality of your blood shed for us as we drink of you together as your children, as your family. We come and we remember Jesus. We remember that in covenant, his blood was shed as when he was eight days old. That in the garden, his blood was shed as he went to brace himself for what was to come. as he entered into the beginning of suffering in every soulish realm so that he would have died if the angels hadn't come and ministered and onto the way and on the way to the cross as he was whipped and pierced and punched and bruised crushed lifted up stretched nailed to that tree we remember that that life flowing out from Jesus was the life that prepares us for entry into the family that has brought us to you, Father. You endured separation from Jesus so that we could never be separated again. And so we come and we partake. We remember you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, that we are welcome and we brace ourselves with the body and the blood of the lamb that was given for us and shed for us, and we drink together in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you, brothers. And uh, our family can't wait to start our Shabbat. So, uh, we wish you Shabbat Shalom from Herndhut and have a, have a blessed weekend with uh, enjoying the intimacy with the Lord, uh, getting insight from his word, getting prepared for the season, for the battles ahead, but knowing his nearness knowing the smile on his face Shabbat over you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Mary. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.